is cash flow? It's really straightforward. It's the flow of cash into and out of a business. A useful example is if we think about ourselves. Probably a lot of us have part-time jobs and get paid at the end of the month. This is what's called a cash inflow. What we spend our money on, like clothes or going out, is our cash outflow. Let's say you earn £200 a month and spend around £150 a month. This seems quite healthy because you earn more than you spend. But problems can happen because you only get paid at the end of the month. So how do you spend what you don't have? Can you see the problem? The bank might let you have an overdraft, but you'll probably have to pay interest on it. Businesses face exactly the same problems, but on a much bigger scale. The timing of money going in and out of a business is crucial because a firm may have made a lot of sales and potentially be profitable, but not yet have been paid for them. At the same time, the business has to pay its bills, so there's a real difference between cash flow and profit. Cash flow is really important in the short term to be able to pay bills. Businesses need revenue to be more than costs to make a longer term profit, so shareholders can be paid a dividend and money can be reinvested in the business. To try and see when there may be cash flow problems, in other words, when outflows are more than inflows, businesses draw up cash flow forecasts. If they can identify times when there may be cash flow problems, they can sort out finance to cover these times. The forecasts might also be used to show to lenders who'll need to know if they lend money, it can be paid back. Let's have a look at how cash flow forecasts are put together. On the forecast, you'll have an opening balance, cash inflows, cash outflows, a net cash flow and a closing balance. These categories don't have to be in this order, so it's important to know how the forecast works. Let's put these headings onto a forecast. This one will just be for three months. Right, we'll put the opening balance here for November. This is how much cash they start off with. Let's say it's £150,000. Then the cash inflows, which can also be called receipts, these are £50,000. Next are the outflows, which can also be called payments or expenditure, and is what the money's being used on. For example, raw materials or loan repayments. For November, the outflows are £25,000. The next thing to do is work out the net cash flow, which means taking the outflows away from the inflows. In this example, the firm plans to have fewer outflows than inflows, so is left with a positive figure. See how £25,000 has been taken away from £50,000 to give £25,000. The last thing to work out is the closing balance. To do this, you add the opening balance and the net cash flow. Here, it's £150,000 plus £25,000. The closing balance of £175,000 then becomes the opening balance for the next month, like this. Let's put in December's figures. The opening balance is £175,000. This time, the inflows are £75,000 and the outflows are £30,000. So this gives us a net cash flow of £45,000. If we add that to the opening balance, we get £220,000 for the December closing balance. Now, let's do January. The opening balance will be £220,000 because that was December's closing balance. This time, they have fewer inflows, only £40,000 this month, but their outflows have increased to £60,000. This means when outflows are taken away from inflows, 
we're left with minus £20,000, which is shown by putting brackets around the figure. Then the opening balance of £220,000 plus the net cash flow of minus £20,000 gives a closing balance of £200,000. In some exercises, you might have to work out what the inflows and outflows are by adding up what monies were received or what payments were made. 